Hello, I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com and welcome to another Fun with FreeNAS. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make virtual machines with FreeNAS. Did you know that FreeNAS can even do virtual machines? Well, we're going to show you how. Well, let's get started. All right, here is my FreeNAS box. So this guy is, uh, you know, it's, it's a... It's an okay hefty machine, so I've got uh, you know a Xeon in here. It's got uh, you know 24 threads and 32 gigs of RAM, and all that good stuff. So let me just show you if you go to the system on on the side here. Eventually, you'll scroll down to something that says Virtual Machines, and this is where you add virtual machines. Virtual Machines is relatively new to FreeBSDs and FreeNAS. Um, and it's probably, I would say it's still considered not as mature as some of the other virtualization platforms out there. But uh, if you have a FreeNAS box and you need to uh, create a virtual machine to do something uh, in a pinch or, or you set something up, then you can definitely do it. And I'm going to show you how. Here we go. So first, I'm going, I've got us zoomed in here pretty good. So, um, I'm going to hide this menu so we can see things a little bit better. Uh, under the virtual settings, you know, you notice that uh, it kind of tells you, hey, don't use this much RAM. So uh, virtual uh, FreeNAS for itself pretty much will take up half your RAM for the ZFS uh, arc. Um, so you need to be mindful of how much memory you're allocating to virtual machines and other resources on on your FreeNAS box. So let's go ahead and hit add. And today we're going to make a Linux machine and we're going to call it pop test and uh, FreeNAS Linux VM. All right. So this is basically a wizard that you can walk through for creating virtual machines. That's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, you can hit these little questions and give you a little bit more detail as to you know what what you're looking for. Um, you know we're going to just go ahead and do the UFI boot, start on boot, enable VNC. Uh, you could delay if you needed this, and then binding. and And this is the binding for um, VNC. So if you, you look down here, it says VNC network interface. Um, so you'll, you'll want that as a, a way to uh, see the desktop. Let's go ahead and hit next. And let's just do four CPUs. Let's give it uh, four, four gigs of RAM. And we're gonna create a new Im disk image. And where do we wanna put that? Let's go ahead and put that in our tank VM folder. Let's go ahead and make that uh, 128 gigs and then hit next. Now in this particular machine, I have the second interface, network interface connected. So that's that's what you wanna use in this. You, your, your machine will vary, of course. Um, you can choose Vert IO or Intel E1000. This, this is the default. It's just really what you should use unless you have some other reason not to. And then installation media location. So we're gonna upload an ISO and we're gonna go ahead and put that in our VM and we're gonna browse to that and I happen to have a pop OS right here click that guy and then click upload and they got a nice pretty GUI for this so we're just gonna watch this to go and boom it's uploaded so you'll see that's right there and we're going to hit next and this is a summary of what we just did and we're going to hit submit and it's now creating the virtual machine see there it is virtual machine and one of the things that we have here if you expand this out is that information you can start it edit it delete it add devices clone it let's go ahead and get this guy started Boom, and it started now. Once it's started, you notice we got a few more options down here. So we can restart it, power it off, stop it, edit it, delete it, devices, clone it, VNC, and serial. So we're going to go ahead and click this VNC console. That's going to open us up in a new uh, tab. And 
here is our virtual machine booting. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the settings and make the scaling to local scaling so that because I've got things kind of zoomed in so for easier visualization here. And now it's booting. Ah, here we are, the Pop OS installer. We're going to just go, and go ahead and walk you through this guy. Next. For me, for me, all the defaults are pretty much good. I'm going to do a clean install. And on this Beehive disk. And uh, we're going to not encrypt. You can encrypt, whatever. So virtualization under FreeBSD and FreeNAS is done via Beehive. So if you want to find out more information about that, go ahead and search for that. You saw that that disk earlier said Beehive. Um, that's the hypervisor that's used for uh, FreeBSD. This is going to take a minute to do the installation, and we'll come back to you after that. All right, here we go. Now we just need to do a restart. And this is gonna restart the virtual machine and then our VNC will connect back up again. Go ahead and do that again. Ah, there we go. And we check, yep, local scaling again. All right, so here's the welcome of Pop OS. Hit next. English, that's perfectly fine for me. Location stuff, you can decide to do that. Time zone. You can connect your online accounts. That's one of the nice things about Pop OS. Skip and Kevin. All right, there's a password. And start using Pop OS. So it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, Pop OS is going to just take a second to boot up for the first time and then I'll go ahead and show you that it got an IP address by the terminal. IP to A and so you, you see right there we have an IP address. We'll go ahead and open up Firefox here. Reduct go and search for get me the geek. Oh, look, there we are. And as you can see, the internet works, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So, over here, you can stop a machine. You can power it off. In this particular case, I'm just going to shut this off and show you how to kill it. Uh, once you've done that, you can go in here and you can delete it. And you can confirm it as a nice little confirmation thing, which is nice. And hit delete. And your virtual machine's gone. Uh, not that you'd want to create a machine and then destroy it right immediately, but uh, if you did need to do it, that's how you'd get rid of a machine too. So that's all there is to creating virtual machines. Uh, let me just uh, go ahead and show you the guide on FreeNash's documentation if you need more information it's by the way you go down here and guide is in the menu always so this is awesome about their product number 17 virtual machines and this will talk to you you can learn more about Beehive and some of these other things and uh, basically a walkthrough of creating VMs for them with a little bit more detail on some of these things so I recommend that. Um, we may go a, do a Docker video here pretty soon. All right, that's all I have for you. Thanks for joining me, and thank you for uh, making it to the end of my video. We'll see you next time.